All right, so I have come into some unfortunate news here uh, with the bike. So um, it's been a couple days now. Again, probably wearing new clothes. I can't even remember what I was wearing in the other video. But I've come into some uh, news. Um, I did start the bike up. It didn't sound... Now, this is the weird part because it didn't sound bad when I first got the bike. It never sounded bad. This lighting in here is extremely bad. Um, it didn't sound abnormal. It actually started fine. It ran pretty good. Um, it never had an issue, but I, I, I went in, I was doing some wheelies and all of a sudden the bike quit. It actually just died. It had battery life. It wanted to start, but it couldn't. So the reason why I'm taking the carbons part is because I thought maybe there was a punctured float. It was flooding itself, but that wasn't the issue. I looked at the floats, obviously nothing was, nothing was uh, abnormal, but then I went to put the bike back together and it wouldn't run good at all. Like it didn't sound like it was running to full potential. So if you're having the same issue, um, look into this. I actually found out that um, one of my diaphragms, the boot on the diaphragm is ripped. I will show you that right now. So this is the diet, this is the, the like, this is what the diaphragm looks like. Um, this is the spring, that's just the cap. Now these are not under a lot of pressure. I've been warned that these are under pressure. They're not under pressure. There's just that little spring there. So when you take these four screws off, just be careful. Um, uh, just like hold the cap, let it off slowly. But this is what's underneath it. So don't be afraid to take these things off. But this, they should sound, I don't know if uh, you guys will be able to hear this or not, but your diaphragm should sound like this. There should be a vacuum like sound. And this flap in here, the slide should come down slowly. Not real slow, but it, it, it should be like premeditated kind of thing. You can hear the little bit of a suction. This one that I've taken apart had no suction. So if you've come into this issue, the, what you can look for, you see that big tear there? That's not a small tear. That is a really big tear. That is what's causing my, my uh, this carb not to work properly. All right, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. We are back in the same video, just different day. So on uh, on an update, I ordered that uh, diaphragm. I just got a call today that it is in. So we're gonna go pick that up. I am kind of all over the place today. Uh, I'm not feeling the greatest. So I called in sick today for work. Going to the, I'm at the clinic right now, but it's a long, long wait. So I'm uh, gonna go pick up that part first, come back here, probably grab something to eat whatever kind of make a little bit of a vlog today instead of just uh, working on the bike but i'll be working on the bike later on today i'm going to get the part got to get the part first blah blah, blah. but the um uh i ordered a part from it's called partzilla and it's in the states but they were actually uh, when i ordered it they told me that like i didn't get a confirmation email i didn't get nothing not a thing so i actually contacted my bank and i was like can we cancel this transaction because i don't know what's going on with my money so they ended up, uh, I contacted Partzilla for a, with a number of different ways and they act, they got back to me through text and they were like, yeah, what's going on? So I told them whatever. And so they refunded me, but I asked them, I was like, the only reason why I'm canceling is because I haven't gotten any kind of confirmation that uh, um, I'm like, my money went somewhere. And they're like, no, it, like it's paid for. I was like, do you still want it? I was like, well, how long is it gonna take? They said anywhere from one to three months. I was like, yeah, no, I need this part now because <laughs> I'm going on a trip here to uh, British Columbia as a family in uh, about two weeks. So, and I wanted to take the six. So I went to Yamaha here in town, bought it there. It was here, it's here now. I bought it literally yesterday. Yeah, I bought it yesterday evening yet. So it got here in a day, a day and a half, sorry. It got here in a day and a half from the second I bought it. So I was pretty pumped about that. Sorry, this is a little bit of a longer clip right now, but so I'm uh, I'm at the clinic right now. Just just made a walk-in appointment. Going to get some food. Going to get my part, and then we will head back home. Try and take it easy for the day, and uh, hopefully I feel better by Monday because Monday's uh, stat holiday. I'm going to work Monday, so hopefully I'm feeling better by then. But for the meantime, going to work on the bike and get that thing running again. And yeah, so uh, I will bring you back when I got the part. All right. Well, I'm done with the doctors. They didn't really tell me a lot, or he didn't tell me a lot. I'm I'm on penicillin. I've been on like I was on penicillin last time I came to the doctor for this same issue. I have like a coppery taste in my mouth, and 
I had COVID once and that's kind of what happened with me is I got like a copper taste in my mouth and I got a fever and whatever. That Sorry, that copper taste was like after I had the COVID. But now I'm just getting it randomly. Like I had it once and they gave me penicillin and it, it, uh, it helped it, but now it's back. So I don't know what's going on. So I'm at the doctor for that. Went to the doctor for that, but gotta get blood work done. So that sucks. But the, uh, anyway, I got my part, sorry. Got my part here, the diaphragm. So the uh, headed back to the house now. I'll change, get into some shorts and a tank top or something. Uh, it's hot. It's like 30 degrees out today. It's really warm. Good, give me a good weekend. But if I can get the bike fixed today, we'll go riding tomorrow and we'll see if this fixed it. See you at the house. Oh, all right. So I'm back in the garage. It's actually cleaned up a lot, and I got my stuff set up here. I <laughs> got my sound system up. My sob and my speaker and the girlfriend gave me her tv so i got everything cleaned up in here a little bit it's looking a lot better it's looking a lot better i'm gonna do a before and after video of like how it looked before and then when i get it cleaned up and looking better but anyway got the part here in the garage with me it's so hot in here holy smokes i'm gonna let this breathe a little bit before i um get started because if i don't I'll be in and out of here like every two minutes. It's just so hot. But anyway, I'll flip the camera on here and I'll show you what we're gonna do. Alrighty, so, uh, so I do believe it is this one. Yeah, so that's the carb that we're gonna be doing the diaphragm on. This one's okay. You can hear it sucking away there. It's good. It, oh, whoops, this one's okay. Actually, that one feels kind of weird. It almost feels like it's jamming a little bit. This one too, I don't know. Hopefully those are okay. Yeah, I don't know. But this one feels normal. This one feels good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about that. Like it's almost like it gives out at the bottom or something. But this one's got nothing to it. So... We'll replace that quick, and then we'll kind of look at the other ones. Alrighty. So, oops. <laughs> Looking at the wrong thing. So, what we want to do, I'm resting on something I don't want to be. There we go. So, the first thing we want to do is take these screws off. And again, these aren't really under a lot of pressure, but there is a spring in here, so just keep your finger on there so it doesn't bust out at you. So again, this one here, I'm not gonna show it again on video. Well, maybe I can. Again, this is where the, you can see the crack right there in the boot, but we're gonna replace that. I have not yet peeled into this like this, so I don't know how, um, I don't know how the uh, this here comes off so maybe this just there's arrows here maybe it just pinches in I'm guessing I'm hoping I have no idea oh okay so yeah I just pin there's arrows here whoops sorry oops sorry there's arrows here so I just pinched on these and I think that's what pulled it out I'm assuming anyway um, then you got your needle this, uh, the new one didn't come with a needle, so push your needle out. Needle's right there. Inspect your needle. See if it's, uh, I'm just putting the diaphragm away over here. Inspect the needle, make sure it's straight. Make sure it's free of any gunk. Looks good, it does, it looks good. Doesn't look bent at all. I'm just looking at it, sorry. Um, okay, so we'll put that just over here. I, I'm really not sure what this is. Uh, it does look a little dirty. I don't know if that matters. Oh, sorry. 
it does look a dirt, bit dirty so i'll clean it up with some carb clean um anyway so we got the new the new diaphragm here straight from yamaha again oh my god there's so many bugs in here that's a wasp never mind that's not a bug get out of here wasp but this one's good <laughs> we will put our needle needle in a haystack there's three there's three dots down there you put it in the middle one i don't know if you can kind of see there you go right there you put it in the middle one there's only three it's just a reflection on everything in there there is only three holes down there you put it in the middle hole comes out there and i'm not sure if you got a pull on it or anything to make it seat properly um I'll pull it out real quick here just to make sure. I just, I've never done this before, so bear with me. So it does look like there is this tiny shelf here. Um, I can't tell from just looking in there if, if it's seating on there properly. But, oh wait, no, never mind. Yeah, it is. I can feel it. Like, you can, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but right there, it's sitting that tiny shelf, and then I can pull it down that much further. So that is sitting on the shelf. It's good. It's seated. Um, so now I'm going to get some carb clean and just clean this up really quick. It won't take long. All right, so cleaned it up a little bit. Um, it's not perfect, but all the gunk is off of it. Oh my goodness, there's spider webs in here just all over. So, now needle needle is in there still. We will put our... Actually, it would have been nice to... Because there's a shelf in there. I'm sure this has to go... Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory. So it's like a keyway. So you got your two shelves in there. I don't know if you can see them. You got your, your two shelves. This is like a keyway, so you got to put this in like that, obviously. And it clicks right in. Done deal. Put this back in here. And these do only go in one way. So again, it's like a keyway. You got your shelf here. And you got your shelf here. So you want to put it in this way. Be careful. Do not tear your boot. As we have just figured out that they are worth $250 a piece. Okay, so now it's seated. You can see it's seated nicely. Looks good. It actually looks really good. It looks perfect. I don't need to play with that at all. Looks perfect. Anyway, we'll put our spring back on. And again, these springs, nothing crazy about it. There is just that center thing in there. So you just Put that in like that put that on the center one thing i will care to mention is these do go on a certain way you see this uh i guess i'm just gonna call it a nipple there's a wasp around my legs he's pissing me off there's this little i'm gonna i'm just gonna call it a nipple this is uh it goes on right here you, oh whoops there goes the spring it goes on right here you see this little i don't even know what it is it's just a tab i'm just gonna call it a tab nipple whatever it it lines up with that so you have to put it on like that don't force it because if you force it you're probably overlapping your uh whatever your boot you don't want to do that these are 250 dollars a piece that's canadian so just put it on there nice and gentle you should be able to feel it kind of slip into place just like that I didn't crush anything. And we'll put it back together. Don't reef these down either. These are like, yes, get them tight. Oh, actually, you know what? Something's not right there because there's a gap. On the bottom here, I'll, I'll try and show you. Here's a gap here a little bit. 
Oh wait, maybe there's not. Maybe I'm wrong. It looked like there was a gap. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's just pulling up on it. Maybe that's why there's a gap. So maybe I'm just tightening that down just a little bit too much. Like, I'm, it's not even tight. It's just came down a little bit. So I'm going to loosen that up just a little bit. Make sure it is snug on there. Next one down. For some reason, that's not catching. There we go. That was weird. Okay. Number three. That one grabbed nicely. And number four. I'm literally just going finger tight for now. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I just did that. Can you guys see something in the in the camera that's not right? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I forgot the spring. Now I gotta take it all apart again. That's gonna be funny in the that's gonna be funny in the video. Glad I remembered it now. I would have put it back together and been like, um, okay, so what's wrong with my what's wrong with my engine now? That's really funny. That's really funny. Okay, so again, like I said, oops, there goes a the spring. It sits in the shelf. Nothing crazy about it at all. This will sit over the boot, or not over the boot. We'll sit over that just like that you can feel it even sit into the shelf here remember your little tab nipple whatever you want to call it don't be rough with these save yourself money and just be gentle okay so that's sitting in there nicely put that back on there One, two, three, and four. So now I'm gonna just give him a little, a little torque with my fingers, just to get him snug down, no vacuum leaks. And now, this should be back to normal. Perfect. And this one here, sounds the same, but these, uh, no, that one sounds better. Yep, now these sound the same. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should take them apart and just clean them up. Since I'm already here, I'll do that. I'll do that in a, well, I guess I can, I don't know. I can do it right now, I guess. A lot of editing. With your third one here, remember this is your uh, choke. So you want to be careful with this one. Not be careful as in like you're going to break it. Just remember when you're putting it back together, this ha does have to go over that. And this goes inside there, this little brass piece. 
it's like a, I don't even know really. But we'll put that off to the side along with that. Inspect our boot one more time since we're in here. Everything does look good. It does seem a bit gravelly. It does, it really does. So I mean, I, what, I guess what we could do is, I don't even know how the proper way to pull these things off. I'm just trying to do it again here. I think that's how I got the last one off, is just pinch and pull. I could be wrong, I don't know. I can feel that it wants to come. There, I just kind of pinched these and just grabbed on the one side. Just kind of let that needle drop out. Again, this diaphragm does look good. There's no pinholes. Diaphragm looks solid. I'll put that up. This needle looks good. It's not dirty, it's straight. It's nice and straight. Yep, I'm gonna clean it off real quick though. There. Just a really quick spray with some brake clean. Just gonna put that off to the side. Actually, you know what? Um, I'm gonna put this just in here. I'm gonna put the needle here just kind of off. I just cleaned it so I don't want to put it anywhere gross. I'm gonna just spray the brake clean just in and around the holes here because it does sound a little greasy. I just sprayed in there and whatever, a little wet still. So now I want to spray out, I want to spray out the cylinder here. We won't harm anything. I'm just going to spray some brake clean into there. I'm just going to walk over here. There's still some leftover fuel in the fuel rail there, the car, but if you want to call it, I don't know what it would be, but. So I just finished everything up here. I'm just placing everything back down and in. I'm hoping that uh, whatever I was feeling, I'm hoping that fixed it. I really hope it fixed it. But I'm just putting everything back together now. Flip this around. Actually, I was like before. I just don't know how to put it, so it's, there we go, kinda. Put a screwdriver up here, something. There we go, it works for now. So we'll put this back in here. Find where we gotta put our needle. Sorry, I can't show you where the needle's going, but actually I could before I put this on. So you got your, right there your needle fits in right there so when you put this in your needle has to go in there just trying to set this up so everything will stay put holy moly whatever i'll just hold it kind of just feel for it. You 
can also look through the top of the carb. It's a lot easier. That fits in like that. And it looks nice and looks like it's sitting in there nicely. I'll just kind of give it a tap everywhere since this is a old one. Make sure it's sitting nice. There, this one was the, the tab was kind of sitting up just a little bit. So I pushed the tab down into its hole. Everything else looks really good. So we will put this back on. You want to make sure your cap is clean too. You don't want anything dirty getting in there. Again, make sure you're nice and gentle with this. You don't want to rip it. You don't want to damage it at all. There we go. She's nice and snug. First screw. I remember with your choke screw, I'm just going to put this down. Probably going to leak a little bit. Remember with your choke screw, you got to put that collar on here. So your collar fits over your the choke screw itself. And you put it on. Whoops. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I want to take this off now. I just twisted the I just twisted the uh, diaphragm cage thing here. I want to make sure I don't bend the lips at all. Oh, everything still looks okay. Can never be too careful. No vacuum leaks. All right, so we'll see if this helped it at all. I mean, yeah, I don't know if it helped it, but because this one does sound a little gravelly, whereas that one sounds nice and smooth, so. Just for the hell of it, I'm not going to show it on video, it's going to be a long video. I'm just going to take this apart and do the exact same thing. Okay, that took forever, so I ended up taking apart these two completely again, like right to, down to the needle. And I cleaned them right out, I sprayed them out with car clean, I, I, I scrubbed them right out. They're sounding a lot better now. Like they don't sound like there's gravel in there, I don't know how gravel would have even gotten there but somehow they just sounded like they were gravelly like there was something scratching the slide so this is actually the plastic diaphragm scratching against the aluminum that you can hear this is not gravel it's just the fact that the diaphragm is plastic and over time it scratches against the aluminum and creates that sound but everything sounds good now they're all working to they should so now we're back to here so i'm gonna clean i'm just gonna since i'm here i'm just gonna uh, clean this up a bit. Um, yeah, we're back to putting the carbs in, so let's get to it. So when putting this back together, remember this is your, uh, this is the throttle side, or I guess that's not throttle, sorry, choke. Well, it is throttle. I'm sorry. I'm not thinking right. Your choke is on your throttle, duh. But so this has to go on the left side. 
your diaphragms will point up, remember your bowl's down. And I did loosen off um, all my C-clamps, so they are still loose right now. Got my, uh, uh, this is my choke cable. So I wanna, I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm actually just gonna bring this up so it doesn't get in the way. Same with these cables over here. I'm just gonna bring them up like that. Um, kinda fish it. Now to get this in here, um, it's not fun. I actually hate trying to put this thing in here. It's it's a little bit of a puzzle piece. You just kind of kind of let it fall in a little bit. There, that was actually a lot easier than last time. We're not done yet though. Far from done. So now you want to line up uh, the bottom of your carbs to the boots, which again it's not that hard. You just kind of be patient. Patience is a virtue. actually already starting to sit in. Okay, well we are far from Far from level, where are we here? Gotta line this thing up somehow. Putting it on the first time was easy. This is not as easy as it was the last time. Just gonna take off the cover on this side so I can see the end cylinder. That way I can kind of sort of match up. Maybe where I'm going. I don't know if I'll be able to actually see it, but. At least my garage is kind of clean so I don't lose anything or get anything mixed up. Okay, so that one's actually that one's actually lined up pretty nice. So is this one, I think. Yeah. So I don't know if it's just a matter of rocking it in. I'm not sure why they don't want to go in. 
I don't know if I need a little bit of lubricant to help, which I really don't know what I would use. I'm gonna bring, can I bring all the, no I can't. Okay, that one kind of went in. That one went in. Son of a bitch. Fuck! There. Now they're all seated. Ugh. That took a while, but okay, so now, um, that took a long time. That was frustrating. So now, there's those screws. I'm not gonna be able to show you. I already showed you in the disassembly, um, but there's those screws to hold down the C-clamps on the bottom side of the carb here. Um, they're located here, 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 and way on the other side in here. You just gotta screw them down so that your clamps get nice and tight. Um, this is the, this is what I use to get at it. It makes it really easy. Remember, this is a, what is it, a T15, I think? Yes. It's a T1515. So we'll do that, we'll tighten those down, and then uh, we'll get our throttle cable set up again. Uh, we gotta get our coolant lines hooked up, our fuel lines hooked up, and our air hoses hooked up. Then we should be good. Then we'll fire it up. Okay, so I've been on this for a bit now. Holy smokes, I had to take it, I had to take the carb off again because I forgot to put the fuel line on properly and blah 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 but i've gotten all that done so i wanted to show you guys a trick for your throttle adjustment so if this i need a new throttle cable so this is kind of a good good example so if you've law if you've maxed out your adjustment here and you've got lots of play i've got literally zero play right now there's nothing which is exactly how i want it so to do that you come down here to your top screw not your bottom screw there we go now we're into adjustment Come to your, do I have a screwdriver? Your top screw right here. Oh my God, where's my focus? So you want, Jesus, there we go. You want to pull this, like this screw, not these bolts. You wanna pull your screw all the way back, as far back as you can. So is that your, where are we here? So is that your, uh, your top, like this one here? I'm looking through my camera. So this one here has no slack. When it's pulling on this right now, it is tight. So you want your top screw to have absolutely no slack. So pull this straight back. You won't even have to tighten this screw up here. Just tighten this one. And then you will have absolutely zero play. Like there's nothing there. When I twist it, when I twist it, it, it opens the, it opens the throttle. I can't even show you the screw there. there. You can kind of see everything moving. As soon as I move it, it opens the throttle. And there's, uh, I mean, it's, it does stick a little bit, I guess. Like, oh wait, no, it doesn't. Sorry, it doesn't. But there's zero play there now, so that's good. It's set up perfectly. I got my uh, my choke aligned nicely. Everything's set up. Um, everything's connected besides my air. 
my fuel's connected, my coolant's connected, so I'll get my air, my air connected here. And just so that you guys know again, oops, I'm stepping all over my air hose. Um, so your coolant line, I'm pretty sure this is your coolant line. It's either fuel or coolant, one or the other, it doesn't matter. You have to connect it anyway. So before you put your carbs on, I'm pretty sure I said this in the other video, but I'll say it again. Before you put your carbs on, connect this line. It goes on either side of your carbs. This one will go under, it goes underneath your bowl. This one connects to the side here, right? Uh, kind of there, you can kind of sort of see it. It's right, uh, connects right here. This hose right there. It's right below your bowl. It's They're really easy to put on. And the other one's over here. Again, I don't know if I can even show you without uh it's right there below your set screw it's this hose here so it's right beside it again it's super easy to put them on just i can't show you easily right now because the bolt because everything's on um next thing next thing i gotta do is install my air cleaner here she just pops under there um make sure you connect your hose up here not your hose or your electrical the way electrical and tuck your wires and I think that's about it. We're getting close. I figured I would uh, do a test run here instead of just go straight to installing the air box. So here I'm just doing a test run to make sure that I have the carbs hooked up correctly and everything was working. All right, so we're kind of at a moment of truth. I have everything hooked up to test it at least. Um, I can see if she runs. Pretty nervous. Could be just out of fuel. Yeah, I'm thinking it's probably out of fuel. It was indeed out of fuel. That's why it would not turn over. Try it again here. Put some more fuel in it. I'm gonna try this again. We've got our fuel hooked up. Climbing away, fuel's turned on. No choke, I'm not gonna do choke. Let's see if this works. Choke it just a little bit. this okay full choke
not sure why. I covered this one and it's fixed now, but this one doesn't do anything. guys that's gonna conclude this video i've done what i can to the bike right now um, i'm taking it to dad's cycle so that um he can take a look at it they can uh fiddle with it hopefully they get it fixed uh it will be in part four um an update on the bike see what's going on with it the uh, don't forget to like don't forget to hit the like button don't forget to subscribe hit that bell as you are not going to want to miss the trip to bc on the boulevard i'm not obviously not gonna be able to take the six because it's not fixed I just say six as an R6. I just always call it the six. But the boulevard, I'm going to be taking the boulevard. Uh, I will also be posting that for sale. But the uh, I'm taking the boulevard to BC. So if you hit that bell, you'll get a notification for the uh, the trip to BC as it will be posted very, very soon. Um, but yeah, hope you guys like the video. Hit that like button, subscribe, share, comment. Let me know how you're liking the videos. Hit that bell. We'll see you on the next one, guys.